Hey everyone, and happy Monday. Welcome to this week's episode of The DVC Show. Uh, I am Paul Krieger, joined by my lovely wife, Amy. Hello. And this week we are also joined by DVC fan contributor, Lauren De La Cruz. Lauren, so great to have you here again. Thanks for having me again. You're welcome, you're welcome. And uh, happy holidays um, to all of those um, that are out there. Uh, celebrating. Um, and uh, we're sort of in that in-between period right now between Christmas and New Year's. And we thought, you know, as 2022 draws to a close, why not take a look back at all of the memorable uh, events, announcements, exciting stuff that happened with Disney Vacation Club in 2022. Uh, Lauren, over the years, um, this is uh, what the third or fourth year that, that you've actually compiled this, I think. I think so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and we were just talking before the show, uh, Lauren was saying um, that she has to start this at the beginning of the year and just keep a running list of all of the exciting things that are happening. Um, yeah, that smart. I would not do that. And then I'd be probably floundering at the end of the day to, to sort of discover them all. But um, you're, you're the expert when it comes to this type of article in, in terms of all of that kind of stuff. So thank you so much. Um, but yeah, we thought we would, uh, just sort of run down the top things that have gone on in the Disney vacation club space in 2022. Uh, and then briefly, maybe just hearken on some of the things that we're excited for, for 2023, um, what's to come, uh, maybe some predictions of what we might see in the new year. Uh, but as always, if you love our content here on DVC fan, if you love the DVC show, please so show, sh I can't talk show some love to our sponsors at the world of DVC. Uh, DVC Resale Market, if you're looking at buying a Disney Vacation Club contract or potentially looking to sell your contract, Monera Financial will help you with that purchase of your DVC resale contract with some amazing financing options for those. And then DVC Rental Store, where you can try before you buy, rent Disney Vacation Club points, or rent out your Disney Vacation Club points uh, for some extra cash in your pocket. Um, so please show them some love um, because uh, they are what allow us to create all of this amazing content. But uh, to the topic at hand, we are talking about uh, 2022 and everything that has happened here in the past year. Um, before we sort of dive down this bulleted list, um, Lauren, just give us give us your thoughts. How was 2022 as a member from your perspective? Um, you know, what what did you like? What did you dislike? Um, and uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, well, I think things are on the upswing. Uh, definitely feeling better than what we saw in 2020, 2021. I know there are a couple of rough years there where we felt like everything was being restricted and taken away. And I feel like this year we started seeing a reversal of a lot of that. Um, and some exciting new expansions came about too, which I think are also on this list. So yeah, so that, that, and that's sort of the first thing that we have on the list here um, that you put together is the expansion of the villas at Disney's Grand Floridian Resort. Uh, you know, Big Pine Key came online. I think it was, uh, was it May it, or March? March or May? I forget. I forget what month it opened. Um, Officially June. In June, yeah. Okay, I'm way off. We stayed open night. <laughs> yeah, no, it's been a long year. Let's just put it that way. Uh, but yeah, no, we stayed there opening night. We watched the construction go along throughout the year. And um, uh, just a wonderful addition to the Grand Floridian. I think the, the rooms are definitely beautiful. Um, you know, that, that I, I do think that it, for them, it was a, an easy win in terms of sort of making these resorts what they are. You know, it was sort of a clip, quick little flip of the Big Pine Key building. Um, almost like a soft goods refurbishment is essentially what they did in the interior of the rooms. I mean, it did. Um, uh, yeah, except, you know, the bathroom and stuff was pretty, pretty fresh, you know, in terms yeah. of like the tile and the fixtures and the sink and uh, the really pretty mirror. But, um, you know, the, the bones of everything was there, you know, the, the, um, the walls and stuff, a lot of that just needed paint and, and touch yeah. up. But, but yeah, it, it honestly, what I like about it the most is the, it added some needed inventory at that resort and, and it added the category that, that's needed the most, which are studios. Now these are a little different than deluxe studios, but they still are, you know, around the same range in terms of points per night. And so that gives a lot more people opportunities to stay at Grand Floridian. 
Yeah, 200 new resort studios. And that's that's sort of, as you, as you said, that's been much needed in terms of inventory at Disney Vacation Club. You know, even now, you know, where we stand with these 200 villas, um, it's still very difficult in some circumstances to get what you're looking for, even at the 11 month booking window. And so a lot of that was caused by, you know, the, the cabins at Copper Creek. A lot of that was caused by the bungalows at the Polynesian, which really just inflated the point charts when most people are not looking to stay in those type of villas. Most people are looking to stay in these deluxe studio categories. And so this is, this I think is turning, turning the tide on that. Um, and, uh, Lauren, have you had a chance to stay in these villas yet? I haven't yet, but I did get to visit. And I have to say, I love all the details from Mary Poppins Returns. You know, everything from the little penguin that you'll find hidden in that lamp in the center or, or mm -hmm. chandelier in the center of the room um, and the wallpaper behind the little beverage cooler station. It has all these really pretty little details. And I think the rooms came out really lovely. Um, looking forward to trying it out one day. I did end up booking the deluxe studio one more time when we're going to hopefully be traveling with our baby because I thought maybe the amenities might be more helpful than the resort studio. Yeah. Um, but I, I still think they turned out really lovely. And, you know, they introduced a new booking category, too, for Grand Floridian with the theme park view, which is something that they didn't have before. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of exciting, too. Yeah, that's a great point that, that now we have the ability to book a theme park room and actually watch the fireworks, you know, from a DVC villa at Grand Floridian. Sure. <laughs> what most most people that we hear uh oh hear it's that one tree <laughs> <It is. laughs> that's the uh, reason you hear about it though is because yeah, well, you know if you get it you're not happy yeah. there's one room at at the new studios that is a theme park room that if you go out there's just a tree like in your way yeah um it should have its own booking category i'm telling right? you that, that tree's days are oh, numbered because, how it has not been cut oh, down already yeah because uh, everyone that gets it like we see we see a lot of posts so every time someone stays there and so i feel like we see them post that they asked to get moved and they yeah. did so and they get points yeah. refunded and and you know those those are going for a premium point rate so uh but yeah no it, i think the majority of the views are pretty good though but minus major, the tree room minus the tree room yeah <laughs> um and, and you know it's not finished with grand floridian we actually just saw uh, a post the other day from disney where they were sort of recapping what they've been working on over the past year and sort of hearkening to what they're going to do in 2023. And they're going to completely refurbish that main lobby at the Grand Floridian, not the villas, but the main building there um, that everyone, it's, it's kind of iconic for everyone. But um, that's sort of on the way here. And I assume sort of, Lauren, to your point earlier, you know, they're going to sort of inject a lot of those similar touches of uh, Mary Poppins mm -hmm. and Mary Poppins Returns probably into that, uh, that grand lobby. I'm a little scared about what they're going to touch and what they're not going to touch. Um, ha have you read about that, Lauren, or you have any thoughts? I have. And I mean, I was thinking about what other changes have been made in that main building. I mean, look at Citricos and that mm -hmm. being revamped, yeah. the inclusion of Enchanted Rose. I think they're gorgeous. They're definitely a departure, though, from the original design and theming of the Grand yeah. Floridian. So. It's just, I think they're looking to modernize it. Oh, they have know? to, yeah. And, and, and it, it's due, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, and like Lauren said, like Enchanted Rose looks amazing. Sister Goes looks amazing. I'm excited to see Narcoosies. We've not ever been there, but I'm, I'm hoping, you know, we can go there when they reopen. Um, but, you know, I think that only good, good stuff can come from yeah. second up um and this was just this caught everyone by surprise i think this year when when it was announced but there is going to be a new tower coming to disney's polynesian villas and bungalows um this will actually be going in the space between where the um the wedding chapel area is and the wedding pavilion of grand floridian and then where the existing polynesian villas go but um this is just a huge win, I think, for everyone. Um, Lauren, uh, I don't know what your thoughts are, but um, uh, I think it'll be hard pressed for me to uh, stop Amy here from buying points once this actually opens up. Yeah, no, that sounds great. I mean, if this introduces as part of the same condo association as the existing villas, it would be a complete key changer. I feel like there are plenty of DVC members who might shy away from the Polynesian knowing you're basically looking at studios or bungalows right now. 
Um, so to have more options would be a fantastic thing. I know we don't yet know um, whether it'll be its own association or not, but there's also you know new amenities coming. So I know there was mention of new dining options. That's what I'm personally looking forward to as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're, we are all just here for the food. That's all. That's why we bought Disney Vacation Club, truthfully. Um, no, I, I agree with you there. Um, I will put this out there. You know, at this point in time, I do believe it's probably going to be part of the same association. And I, I mainly base that off of the fact that they've not really been having any rofer activity for this resort for a period of time. And that's sort of the similar trend that they had with Grand Floridian leading up to its sale. Um, so, I mean, at this point in time, I've got to imagine it'll probably I think be. they're still arguing over it. I swear. <laughs> I don't think they know yet. That's why they haven't told us. Or, or, I, or they're just, they haven't told us because what happened last time was that a lot of people started just buying up Grand Floridian on the resale market, going, okay, I'm going to get it now before it comes on and yeah. it's more expensive, um, which wasn't the case. It came on and prices actually went down uh, because of the price per point, the yeah. starting price per point. But... Um, I don't know. I just like, I'm having a hard time believing that they're going to leave poor little Riviera over there by itself <laughs> with these restrictions again when a new resort opens. Um, but except you know. for Disneyland. Yeah. The, yeah. The over there would be the next one to have restrictions, probably. Yeah. I, yeah. I would have to imagine that the Disneyland Tower is definitely going to have them. Um, but I think what they're viewing with these different like little add ons to these resorts are that, you know, it's it's easy points for them to sell. You know, they're prioritizing them over like Riviera right now. Um, so uh, this one's a little bit different, though, like for Grand Floridian, that was like an easy flip. Basically, they're, they're reselling those those rooms on what I would call like a soft goods refurbishment budget. Um, so the spread of what they're making per point sold is much higher uh, here. They're doing a lot of infrastructure. They they mm -hmm. took they took time to move that giant tree that has been there forever. Um, they preserved that. They lifted it up out of the ground um, and they moved that uh, into a different area of the park. Um, so there is a lot more infrastructure. This is going to be mm -hmm. a more costly project for them, yeah. uh, which would probably be the only reason I could see them sort of saying, "Okay, we're going to put this in its own little category out there," but. Um, super exciting still it's going to bring to with sort of sort of the flip of the game from uh, the story with Grand Floridian it's going to bring to the Polynesian uh, what the Polynesian needs um, we hope we hope I mean, but yeah, it looks like there's assume. gonna be looks like there's gonna be some one bedrooms some two bedrooms mm -hmm. added as part of this um, and some more studios which are also much needed to that yeah, I can't help but think that it's gonna it's I, I every time I think about it I'm really excited about it I feel like it's going to remind me of Grand Destino, which I love. You know what I mean? I just think like the color palette might be similar. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. Just when I look at like the concept art and stuff, it could be completely different. But that is like what I compare it to, right? We put this tower at, at this resort. Um, I think some people were skeptical at first, but Grand Destino is, you know, gorgeous. So I hope I hope that they do something similar there with yeah. that. Next up on uh, Lauren's recap of our 2022 year of DVC is the return of Moonlight Magic events. And I'm just going to put it out there. This was a win across the board. Um, you know, there, there were some complaints from some people uh, about the events early on, but we wanted them to come back. They came back. They were some wonderful events. We actually got to spend one with you, Lauren. And, uh, yeah, and that was, was awesome fun. Uh, when you guys were in town. So um, had you gone to Moonlight Magic before all of that? I, or was no, that first? was actually our, our first Moonlight Magic was with you guys. Oh, that's awesome. That's so yeah. um, what did you think of the events? Uh, are you happy that they're back? I am so excited they're back. I think the registration process was probably the most challenging aspect of it, <laughs> yeah. but actually being there. And then since we went to the one at Epcot, I love that we were able to use those vouchers for flower and garden festival booths. Um, mm -hmm. That was kind of a neat perk. Yeah. And got my little popcorn bucket and that was probably the longest line I had all night. <laughs> I forgot about the, uh, the, the, <laughs> the long popcorn bucket lines that they had. But uh, 
Yeah, no, um, we we attended several different events this year and had a, had a wonderful time at all of them. You know, those after hours events are one of those extra perks that makes it special uh, to be a Disney Vacation Club member. Um, and we do know that they are coming back in 2023. We do know that there's going to be one event that actually comes to Disney's California Adventure uh, out at Disneyland, which um, probably to supplement, you know, the excitement that they're going to build out there yeah. um, with the... Um, with the Disneyland Tower and not to bounce around here, um, but, um, you know, the, this is down the list a little bit further, but also, you know, out, out, in, out in the West, uh, we've got a new Disneyland DVC lounge actually coming mm-hmm. to Disneyland, um, which is also just a, a super exciting announcement as we get ready for that tower um, that's going to go out on the West Coast there. So, yeah, I'm excited. I mean, we we own Grand California now, so. Uh, we plan to hopefully go out to Disneyland a little more than we were before, at least, you know, every other year or so. And it's nice to see some DVC love going out there, you know, because because they didn't have a Moonlight Magic last year. Yeah. And we, you know, we don't have a member lounge yet out there. So it's cool to see those things coming. Uh, so in the past with the Moonlight Magic at DCA or Disneyland or whenever they had them out on the West Coast, you did not have to be staying on property you know Mm -hmm. they didn't have the the on property registration and then the general registration that you know had a lot less inventory uh in the past they just had general um so i'm wondering how they're going to do that you know this time around yeah Yeah. i'm wondering if maybe they they try to align this with the early days of um the new tower being open um so that it sort of drives you know when when the tower first announces and when it first uh goes up for uh booking um there's not going to be a lot of owners of that tower at that point in time and so they're really going to be booking that tower primarily with other members and other members points, you know, at the zero seven month booking window, those people. Let's that are, hope because I want to go. That's what we're banking on at, least <laughs> at this point um, with, with our points this year. Um, so we definitely hope to make it out there uh, for the grand opening of the Disneyland DVC tower. Um, and we are convinced that we are going to get Lauren there uh, within the next year or two as well <laughs> uh, in some capacity. So Lauren, are you excited for, you know, both, both the new lounge out there, uh, you know, the, the Moonlight Magic, and then, of course, the tower that are coming to Disneyland. Um, you've yeah. never been to Disneyland, correct? Or it's been, oh, it's I, been a long I, time. It's been about 20 years, so I haven't even seen California Adventure since it first opened. Oh, wow. <laughs> Well, it's been I, that long. I would say you, you you didn't miss much in the early days. Most people <laughs> most people did not like the early version of California Adventure. But, it wasn't uh, the greatest, from what I remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was kind of it was kind of a little bit all over the place. But uh, yeah, but no, yeah. Are you excited for the new tower and everything coming out there? I am. I mean, you hear all these stories about how hard it is to book at the villas at the Grand Californian. So just to have another option out there sounds fantastic. Um, really looking forward to seeing what everything turns out to be. And it's exciting that there are more studios out there too. I think they're still trying to feed that demand for studios. Um, it'll be really great to see the finished product. I know that they've, we've seen some pictures of what the construction has looked like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's coming yeah. along. They've definitely, they've, uh, they did have a, I, I saw this on LinkedIn of all places, but they did huh. do a topping out process of the tower. So it is now at its highest point. So they've, mm-hmm. they've laid the highest steel that'll be on that building and they've started to wrap the building as it goes up. So they are, they're sort of getting to that part where they're going to start working on that interior of the building. Um, my guess is still, we may not really see this open though until either late summer or early fall next year. Mm-hmm. Um, but it remains to be seen. Um, you know, before that, we'll, we'll obviously see the resort go on sale. We'll get an idea of what the point charts look like and all of that kind of fun stuff. But um, yeah, and to Lauren's point, I think that the amount of studios is going to make it a lot more accessible yeah. for DVC members to come to Disneyland to use their points at Disneyland, even if they don't own at Disneyland Tower or Grand Californian. Yep. I think it's going to make it easier. So yep. at least that's what I'm hoping. Absolutely. <laughs> Next up on our list, um, you know, uh, and I like how you put it here. We can finally stop asking the question <laughs> of when are borrowing restrictions going to end at Disney Vacation Club, uh, because on July twelfth of this year, um, those officially ended, and people can now go back to that full one hundred percent borrowing from their next 
use here. Um, Lauren, thoughts on this? Did this sort of uh, restrict your travel or, or, or how you traveled um, or impact you at all? Um, we were pretty conservative about borrowing to begin with, but I will say this kind of opens the door for more possibilities. And we we're just talking about, you know, staying in one bedrooms more often, um, you know, do I dig into the points for another trip? It, it kind of does feed on all that excitement of what could I plan next? Yeah, for sure. Uh, well, um, we had, I've, I've heard from multiple people where it's been like, um, you know, I bought with that plan to borrow at all mm -hmm. times, you know, booking that mm -hmm. trip every two years or also a lot Which of is the point of buying a small contract also, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. You know, you buy a 50 point contract and your, your plan is probably the bank and borrow. If you have multiple, like us, we have three 50 point contracts and then a 68. And then we have another one that's a little bit bigger, but, um, our plan was to rotate when we use those by banking and borrowing. And so this kind of makes that you know, better or, you know, possible. But yeah. I will say that the borrowing restrictions like really put us back in our place for a little bit. <laughs> it actually did us some good because it kind of kept us from like draining our points, you know, and now I feel like we're, we're more in, in the current use here than we have been in the past. Yeah. We're, we're, we, we were, we were definitely heavy borrowers, um, previously, and now we've sort of, this has sort of reset us and allow us to yeah. allow us to go back to let's use this year's mm -hmm. points. Let's borrow when we have to, to maybe splurge a little bit, but we're, we're mainly staying within this use year. But, um, yeah, it definitely, when that, when that came, uh, uh earlier this year and, and went back to a hundred percent, we saw a lot of people you know, happy with that change. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of international members as well. Yeah. But, you know, coming from my position at DVC Rental Store, uh, we did immediately see sort of the effect of why these borrowing restrictions were in place is because like literally minutes after that was announced, you know, availability started to tighten up uh, very quickly. And, you know, I, I mentioned this earlier in the show, but even in the seven to 11 month booking window, it can become extremely difficult these days to get the room, um, the dates that you're looking for, the resort you're looking for. Um, we were also sort of, um, uh, I don't know what the right word for it is, but we were sort of privileged to experience some relaxed booking in the zero to seven month window while those restrictions were there, you know, mm -hmm. there was a lot more to mm -hmm. grab within the zero to seven month window. And I'm here to tell you there within the seven month window anymore, mm -hmm. it is very hard to swap to a different resort or something like that. You've really got to be stocking the system and finding something. And so I think all of those reasons really are why these borrowing restrictions were in place and why they waited until they did to relax these back to normal. Uh, because it, it really was, they, they saw the pent up demand of points. They knew that once they returned that to normal, it was, it was going to sort of, uh, I don't know, turn into the wild west out there again in terms of, uh, and rooms and stuff like that. So, um, but super excited that it's sort of back to normal. Uh, next up on the list is something that people have been waiting years for, uh, and that is the Boulder Ridge refurbishment project, which I can't even remember when this was originally announced, but it just got delayed and delayed and delayed. I swear they've actually had a test room done for the better part of three years um, because I, I'm pretty sure we saw some photos of that early on mm -hmm. and uh, they are finally now um, working on this. Actually, some of the first rooms have come into in, into mm -hmm. rotation now and uh, I don't know about you, Lauren, but we're, we're super excited to, to see, see the finished product and stay in these rooms. Yeah, no, they look great. I, I know the pictures that have popped in the group. I mean, it still feels like it kept the character of the resort. I know that was a concern for some people. And we have those new Murphy beds. Everything looks a little bit more refreshed and modern. Um, I, I'd be excited to stay there. Yeah, we've got we've tentatively got a stay booked uh, at the end of March mm -hmm. uh, for one night in a studio. So um, we may look to move that up as we sort of track the refurbishment progress a little bit more. I know that they've opened up some rooms, but we don't want to. I don't want to take the <laughs> I risk. Play roulette. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't. It is a it is a very very bad game of roulette uh, with uh, Boulder Ridge right now. You're either staying in a room that looks like you're in The Shining, um, <laughs> or you're staying in something that really harkens, um, you know, the character of Wilderness Lodge and Boulder Ridge. And I think these new rooms look absolutely gorgeous 
Yeah, no, I'm really excited about it. Um, I'm hoping that, you know, in March, I'm, I'm assuming that, that it's going to be ready and fully ready in March, but um, I'm, I'm really excited to stay there again um, with the new refurb because what, we stayed there one time. It was, I don't even know, last year maybe. And I was just like, no, it, we're not coming back until this is refurbished. And I, I just felt bad for the owners there because they have been waiting a really long time for this. So yeah. it's, it's coming, it's, it's getting there, you know, so we're, we're really excited for, for that and, and to see more refurbishments coming, you know, in the future here too. Yeah. I, I love, I love that all these 2042 resorts are really going to see some love here within the next couple of yeah. years. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, probably the, I don't know, second to last full refurbishment that, that some of these might see before we get to that date, you know, um, each year we're like, Oh, it's, it's only 20 years away, but it's like, eh, it's 20 years away. So it's, it's going to be here before you know it. So, um, that's super exciting. Um, lastly, on your article article here, Lauren, um, you mentioned new membership uh, extras and uh, special events and stuff like that. Dive into that a little bit for us and uh, sure. what we saw over this past year um, that was exciting. Yeah, so we saw some new events that we haven't had before. I think we saw things like the Halloween meet and treat. Then there was a meet and greet with Jody Benson at a homecoming brunch. Um, there is a Fantasmic showing that was introduced kind of last minute but it was a private viewing for dvc members and then i think most recently we've seen the holidays in hollywood at pizza rizzo and then there's a mer very merry christmas party little meet and greet with gaston where they had mm -hmm. the gray stuff cupcake and some of the foods brew that was a nice little touch um i think it's it's just a nice thing to have some extra perks throughout the year instead of just looking forward to membership mag or moonlight magic events. I think the more events they can have, the better. Yeah. And I'd, I'd also just add to that list, you know, we saw, um, you know, top of the world lounge came back and, uh, and, you know, that's been another added benefit and they've had the wicked wind down events, um, and stuff like that within those spaces. Um, have you been able to attend any of these Lauren? I did the Wicked Wind Down. It wasn't necessarily something that I'll be running back to do again, but I'm just happy to have Top of the World Lounge back yeah. and that seven layer cake. <laughs> we'll, ship you. We'll, we'll ship you some. So Thank you. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, yeah, we've, we've experienced, we did the holiday or the Halloween meet and treat event, mm -hmm. um, which was extra special. We were talking about this right before we started filming. Um, you know, it's, it's cool that all of these extra events are popping up at random points in the season that don't necessarily have a moonlight magic event associated with them. Because I think that's a, that's a, a complaint or a common comment that we see from a lot of members, which is like, well, it's not when I travel, so I'm never going to get to experience any of these membership extras or this this member magic. Um, and keep in mind, you know, these all are special extras that are for direct purchasers. Um, so, you know, you do have to pay that extra money and purchase that direct minimum uh, purchase to be able to attend these or essentially be blue card eligible if we're even calling it a blue card anymore. I don't I don't know what to call DVC it. DVC Y. DV yeah, that's right. what I would call it. <laughs> They should have kept the colors. The colors were easy, <sighs> um, but uh, but yeah. So you you do have to have that designation. But for a lot of people, you know, it was always a case where Moonlight Magic didn't align with their travel dates. Um, and I, Lauren and I were talking right before we started about how it's nice to maybe just pepper these little things in there in between the Moonlight Magic events, having something you know whether it be every week or every other week or every month um, that is special in there. But I would say that they do, especially because of your comment about, you know, the wicked wind down. And I know that's an extra cost and stuff like that. I think they have to sort of watch that designation of how much they are charging. Uh, Lauren, you were mentioning you, you sort of saw some mixed reviews of the holiday event. Yeah, it sounded like some people said that it just wasn't worth it. There was some catered food, there were some character meet and greets, but some of them just felt it was kind of lackluster. If you didn't have a ticket that day, I guess that was more of a perk for you, mm -hmm. um, knowing that admission into Hollywood Studios was included in that package. Yeah. But um, the particular review I'm thinking of from the Diz boards mentioned that they're yeah. already past, or so it was an expensive add-on. Yeah, no, I... That makes a lot of sense. And, you know, I think I think that a lot of that could have been alleviated if they had announced it 
and prior to because by the time it was announced most people had their tickets yep. you know even if you're you know even if we take the annual pass holders out of the equation that it's really it, it would be expensive for us because we already have annual passes but the people who buy regular theme park tickets you know they needed more time so that they could have known to replace you know their ticket with that day instead um, like you would do with like a Christmas party or Halloween party or something like that. Yeah, a hundred percent. You know, that was, that was the biggest feedback that I had originally when, when that event was announced was like, give people a little bit more advanced planning, just like you would with Moonlight Magic. You know, they announced yeah. that for the entire year all at once. And, you know, I, I have to imagine like Lauren, someone like yourself, that's planning a trip or something like that. You know, you need that advanced notice so that you can plan okay. around it. Definitely. I mean, especially because I'm someone who has a sorcerer pass, so I knew for that time period, if I had a trip, I probably would have purchased a ticket that would have covered my blockout dates already. Yeah. And by that point, you probably don't want to splurge on just a holiday party ticket. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that is um, that is the list of sort of the 2022 year in review. We probably, I know, you know, missed some smaller things and stuff like that that happened, but I, you know, I think this really harkens on some of the um, big things that we saw with Disney Vacation Club in 2022. And to what you said, Lauren, you know, when we kicked off the show, uh, really, it was a year of getting back to normal. Um, you know, I remember us filming these shows at the end of 2021 and sort of talking about, you know, I really, we need these things to come back because I just, you, you just don't feel the same as a Disney Vacation Club member. Uh, but I think that this year was that year. They, they checked those boxes that they needed to check. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, as, I'm happy as ever. Um, headed into 2023, Lauren, what is maybe your top wish lists um, that maybe we see and that we're talking about a year from now? Ooh, in terms of wish list, I don't know. Um, I'm really, at least I know I'm looking most forward to what's going on at the boardwalk. Yeah, um, I yeah. think based on availability patterns, it really looks like that revamp is coming in the fall. So I'm dying to see what the villas are going to look like. Because I know we've seen some small portions of the boardwalk change, you know, yeah. with Bellevue Lounge having its transformation recently. Um, Dundee Sundries is now being redone to that coffee shop. Mm -hmm. Cake Bake Shop's coming. I mean, the whole resort feels like it's really... Yeah, kind of I'm I'm fun. oddly excited for Cake Bake Shop. Yeah, um, me too. We're we're hopefully gonna get an opportunity maybe to check out the uh, the original location of that up in Indianapolis oh, before that actually opens next year. But uh, it just from what we've heard, we've got um, a lot of friends that have been able to experience that before, and it just looks great. It it truly reminds me of like what that um, you know. Uh, tea experience at the Grand Floridian used to be like, mm -hmm. um, and so I'm I'm super excited to see um, the yeah you know. the menu is just like right in my wheelhouse <laughs> like sandwiches and you know, <laughs> soups and um, cheesecake and you know stuff like that. So, Amy, what are you hoping for with 2023? Um, I would love to see a, just another. I, it might be a while before we get this, but another uh, new DVC resort announcement. Um, honestly, like I'm still dreaming of, of Yacht Club getting DVC yes. or, you know, just something. I would love to see something that sheds some hope that we're going to have a DVC resort after 2042 in the Epcot, you know, area. I'm, I mean, I'm sure we will. But, you know, I'd love to see something new coming to that area. And other than that, um, you know, obviously I'd like to see, I'm excited for Moonlight Magic. I'm hoping we see some Magic Kingdom dates as well, since we didn't have those last year. Mm -hmm. um, excited for the boardwalk transformation, like Lauren said. And other than that, I'm just, yeah, I'm ready to enjoy DVC again. I hope that we get out to Hilton Head eventually, because that's, that's, That's our, our last one. one that we've never tried oh, before. Our so. last resort, yeah. Yeah. Um, for me, it's got to be all of those people that are still out there waiting for annual passes. Um, mm -hmm. You know, that yeah. is something that, granted, it was never promised and is something that, uh, you know, uh, is, is never guaranteed to return. But, you know, we've heard some rumblings that maybe the first part of the year, hopefully we'll see that benefit come back. Um, because I, I think that really gets to the heart of Disney Vacation Club, you know, 
becoming a Disney Vacation Club member is because you are one of the top affiliate groups of Disney fans that are out there. Uh, you are the people that eat, drink, breathe, live, everything that's Disney. And, um, you know, not having annual passes are significantly impacting how a lot of those people travel and how a lot of those people that um, were uh, constant Disney visitors um, are changing their travel plans. I couldn't tell you the number of people that I've heard that are just coming down and staying in Disney Vacation Club resorts, but have bought annual passes to like Universal or something like that, Mm -hmm. just because it makes more sense for them. And it puts this back into that that average uh, price that they were expecting to pay. Because when you when you look at D- DVC members, at the end of the day, a lot of us were people like myself, um, Lauren probably in the same boat, you know, where we we stayed in the values. We stayed in the moderates. We, we laughed when we thought of, you know, deluxe level prices and stuff like that. And so the pricing of tickets is a factor of our stay as well. And so, I mean... You know, luckily, you know, we were blessed to be able to be grandfathered in and, you know, we're still able to renew our annual passes. But, you know, there are a lot of people out there that, you know, because of uh, things surrounding the pandemic, let, uh, let that annual pass lapse or they've joined since then. And, you know, that's been something that they were hoping for with their membership. Um, and, uh, it's just really significantly impacting how those people get to enjoy being DVC members. So my hope for the new year is that, um, you know, we, we begin to see that change a little bit. It may mm. still be a little bit more expensive than you had hoped for. Um, I, I think the only direction that we go in with annual passes is up in terms of price. Um, and so we'll continue to see that grow, yeah. but, but the value is still there, you know, yep. cause Oh, yeah. I bought my mom a ticket, you know, she came last month and we took her to Epcot for her birthday. And so it was $200, you know, for, for a park hopper ticket for a single day. So, you know, I can see, I can see how hard it would be to not have an annual pass and to want to come mm-hmm. in as a member and, and enjoy the parks, you know, as often as you did before. Yep. So, yeah. Lauren, anything else to add for our 2022 year in review? think that was it awesome well thank you so much for joining us again lauren um and uh good luck i feel like by the time this show goes up we're gonna be very close to baby time yeah <laughs> i'm really excited for well, you lauren we're super you. excited and um you know um uh, everyone that is out there in the dvc fan space um you know please uh show show lauren some love and congratulate <laughs> her and uh um, she might she might be a little less around uh, for a period of time <laughs> where she has some other things that are uh, taking precedent. Uh, but we're super excited to uh, see her and Timothy have their family begin to grow and uh, can't mm-hmm. wait to see them down here for their first family trip to Walt yes. Disney World. That'll be in 2023, correct? Yes, it will. Yes, There's it will. a few trips that we have tentatively planned so depending on how things go we'll we'll see how this works out awesome well we can't can't wait to uh can't wait to see you guys down here meet baby Dela cruz and um Mm -hmm. that will do us for the dvc show for 2022 um it has been a wonderful year um and you know we are always uh super excited to uh sort of share our knowledge of disney vacation club with you Um, and learn from all of you amazing people that are out there that love Disney Vacation Club as much as we do. Um, We would be nothing without you guys um, and, uh, you know, the amazing group that you've created over on Facebook. uh, And we look forward to continuing to chat with you there in 2023. So that'll do it for us. Happy New Year, and we will see you all soon.